Hey there, algebra students. This is Mr. Boyd. Today's lesson is on solving quadratic equations by factoring them. So let's begin first with a review of using the zero product property. So here we have an example where we're asked to solve x plus 3 times x minus 5 equals 0. So using the zero product property, we know that either x plus 3 equals 0 or x minus 5 equals 0. Now we want to solve each equation. So we'll subtract 3 from both sides on the left-hand equation and add 5 to both sides on the right-hand equation. We find x equals negative 3 or x equals 5. So our solution set is negative 3 or 5. There are four steps to solving a quadratic equation. Step 1, set the equation equal to 0. Step 2, Factor the expression. Step 3. Set each part equal to 0 and solve. This is where the zero product property comes into play. And step 4. Check your answer. Okay, so let's move on to our first example. Here we're asked to solve x squared minus 11x equals 0. So the first thing we notice is that these, this has a greatest common factor, and that greatest common factor happens to be x. So when we, we factor out x, we end up with x times x minus 11 equals 0. Next, we want to set each factor equal to 0 and solve. So in the second equation, we will add 11 to both sides, and we end up with x equals 0, or x equals 11. Now let's check it. Substituting 0 in and 11 in, we get 0 squared minus 11 times 0 equals 0, or 11 squared minus 11 times 11 equals 0. So 0 equals 0. And 121 minus 121 equals 0. So again, 0 equals 0. So it checks. Our solution set is 0, 11. Moving on to example 2. Now in this example, we notice that the equation is not equal to 0. So we need to set that equal to 0 first by adding a squared to both sides. Then we want to put it in descending order. So that gives us a squared minus 9a plus 14 equals 0. Next, we want to factor it. So once we factor it, we find that a minus 2 times a minus 7 equals 0 because negative 2 times negative 7 equals 14, and negative 2 plus negative 7 equals negative 9 b in the middle. Next we're going to split it apart into two um, equations by setting each factor equal to 0. And then we'll solve each one by adding 2 on the left and 7 on the right equation. We end up with a equals 2 or a equals 7. Next we want to check it. So we will substitute and when we substitute and solve we find out negative 18 plus 14 equals negative 4. That's true. Negative 63 plus 14 equals negative 49. That's also true. So our equation checks. So our solution set is in fact 2 comma 7. Let's move on to example 3. So here we're asked to solve 4m squared plus 25 equals 20m. Notice here again that our equation is not equal to 0, so we will need to subtract 20m from both sides. Again, put it in descending order so that we have m squared, m, and no m. Next, we'll factor this into 2m minus 5 
times 2n minus 5 equals 0. Set our factor equal to 0. Since the two factors are the same, we only need to do this one time. Solve. And looks like our solution is 5 over 2. So let's check it. So 4m squared plus 25m equals 20m. We want to use the original equation to check it, not any of the other equations. Plug in 5 over 2 for m. When we square 5 over 2, we get 25 over 4. When we multiply those two um, multiplication problems, we end up with 100 over 4 plus 25 equals 100 over 2. 100 over 4 simplifies down to 25. 100 over 2 simplifies to 50. So 25 plus 25 equals 50 is actually a true statement. It checks. Therefore, our solution is, in fact, 5 over 2 or 2.5. All right, let's move on to our next example. Solve x to the third power plus x to the second power equals 15x. Again here, this equation is not solved for 0, so we're going to subtract 15x from both sides. Next, we want to look, is there a greatest common factor? We do in fact see that there's a greatest common factor to this left-hand side, so we'll factor that out. Next, we need to factor what's left in the parentheses, the x squared plus 2x minus 15. When we do that, we find that the um, factors are x plus 5 times x minus 3, because negative 3 times 5 is negative 15, and 5 minus 3 is positive 2. So now we have a completely factored equation, x times x plus 5 times x minus 3 equals 0. We'll set each factor equal to 0 and solve. And so we find that x equals 0, or x equals negative 5, or x equals 3 is our potential solutions. Before we can state that, though, we need to check and make sure that we've done things right. So here's our equation. We're going to plug in our three possible solutions, make sure they all work. And so when we work them out, we find out that they are, in fact, equal. The equation checks. Therefore, our solution set is 0, negative 5, and 3. So take a moment and pause the video. Try this um, equation. And then hit play and check. So how did you do? Okay, guys, that concludes this lesson. Have a good afternoon.